Hello everyone, today... I... Sybil? Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Last week was Independent Bookshop Week, which is run by the Bookseller Association and is in celebration of independent bookshops and choosing bookshops. I think I did my first video for Independent Bookshop Week in, I think maybe 2015, and I did one last year. So this is this year's instalment. So on the Sunday at the very start of Indie Bookshop Week, um, I went book shopping around East London. And if you've been watching my videos for quite a while, you'll recognize all of these as being my favourite bookshops um, but I actually haven't been to Shoreditch for quite a while and Ben and I just wanted to kind of go to our favourite places so I hope you enjoy the bookshopping segment and I'll see you at the end for a book haul. enjoyed watching the book shopping part and now for the book haul but one thing I did want to mention before we go into the book haul is um, there was another thing I really wanted to do on Sunday which was not related to books at all um, but it was linked to the fact that every time I go to East London I'm so close to the filming location of one of my favourite TV shows um, and it's a really old TV show, I say really old, it's like 90s, 2000s, so it's not like that old um, but it's called Goodnight Sweetheart which is like a time slip um, comedy show very so probably one of the most British things you can watch but it is a time slip to the Blitz uh, in the East End and I literally love it. I was too young when it originally aired but I watched it on DVD when I was like a, still still a child and like a young teenager and I was just obsessed with it because the Blitz is like just one of my major special interests in terms of history and because I knew Duckett's Passage, which is basically the bit where Gary, the character, goes from, like, Cricklewood in London in, like, the 90s and goes up Duckett's Passage and then transports himself back to the Blitz. I just had a very geeky, obscure, very clear 
moment um seeing the royal oak and if you've ever watched it please put in the comments because i would love to know that someone else knows that this show existed because i it's nicholas lindhurst like re it's really good so i recommend anyway it's literally on columbia road and despite knowing quite you know knowing my way around that part of london i'd just never been and so because we were going to be in the area and had more time me and Ben walked up and even though because we went on a Sunday it's like the worst time to go because even obviously the, the flower market had all kind of been taken down it's obviously like rubbish everywhere so I'm going to go back and maybe take some cute pictures of me pretending I'm Phoebe Bamford but I'm aware that the majority of people watching this video will have no idea what Connect Sweetheart is so this means nothing to you but um, meant a lot to me in that moment. Anyway, that's my Goodnight Sweetheart moment over, um, and now onto the books that I bought in my book shopping trip. Most of the books that I bought I actually kind of went out looking for, um, but I'm going to start with the one that I didn't expect to buy, um, and it was based 100% on a recommendation from a bookseller in Libraria, because one, I love bookseller recommendations, I, it was my favourite thing actually being a bookseller myself hand selling books and really speaking to people about what they were interested in and I felt like this bookseller just kind of saw into my soul like saw kind of what I want out of a book and when we talked about it and I was just so convinced that, that I bought it and um, since then I've heard so many other people and now now like I've seen it I keep seeing it everywhere um, and so I'm excited to kind of get to it but uh, yeah I'll start with that one I should probably pick it up because I'm I haven't prepared. <laughs> so the book you will have already seen in this video is The Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. When I was talking to the bookseller I said how much I love historical fiction but also books that really play with narrative and different time periods and even from just starting to read this I feel like this is going to be perfect. It is about um, a fictional pilot um, and we see kind of her life across many many decades um, but also the life of an actress who then goes on to play Marion Graves. Um, it's about kind of aviation and solitude and um, the history of ourselves and what we keep private and what we put public. I'm just really intrigued by it and one thing I really love about historical fiction is when a writer creates a fictional like famous person and uses them as a way to explore all of society and then has a modern person kind of almost like I'm not comparing this to um, Evelyn Hugo but kind of like what Taylor Jenkins really does that you have those two perspectives um, and kind of as things unravel you get a greater sense of both of them as humans but also society at the time. So after speaking to the bookseller I just think it's going to be something that is absolutely up my street. The next book is the main book that I definitely knew I wanted and was really the book that I was searching for on this trip and it is The House of Dudley, um, A New History of Tudor England by Joanne Paul. As you all know I'm a massive Tudor history geek and will pretty much read every piece of non-fiction about them and this is one of my kind of most anticipated releases of this year. It is about the Dudley family, three generations of the Dudley family, kind of going from Henry the Seventh to Queen Elizabeth um, and why it fascinates me so much is because it's such an interesting perspective to take on the Tudor court and the history at the time and the spheres of influence that they have um, in relation to the monarch and it almost reminds me a little bit of kind of what, obviously this is non-fiction but what Hilary Mantel did with Wolf Hall with the idea of looking at a period in history and a particular monarch for instance through the perspective of one of the people in their sphere of influence um, like with Cromwell. I've always been interested in the rise and the fall and the rise <laughs> and the fall again of the Dudley family especially because I grew up in the Midlands and I've spent pretty much every Saturday at Kenilworth Castle which is actually probably my favourite historic building in England I think um, and so I cannot wait to read this and I also think this cover is just stunning and I'm really happy now that historical non-fiction is really getting what it deserves um, because this is just beautiful. I also heard um, Dr Joanne Paul talk about it on, oh my god don't forget Claire, um, not just the Tudors, the podcast um, run by History Hit with Susanna Lipscomb. I get so many, in fact too many, book recommendations from that podcast so 100% recommend um, but since hearing um, John Paul talk about it then I, 
I'm really excited. <laughs> I've just realised that actually all of these books were kind of recommended to me. So we have The Great Circle, recommended to me by a bookseller. We have The House of Dudley, which was recommended or talked about on Not Just the Tudors, the podcast. And this was, this is actually a year, a year old recommendation from Katie at Books and Things because she did a video almost a year ago. I think it was a wrap up actually and she mentioned the kingdoms um, and the way she talked about it was, I don't think I've ever seen her look that joyful. It was just a beautiful moment as someone who loves her channel. Um, obviously she loves Natasha Pulley and I ha did try to read Natasha Pulley's first novel and didn't quite get on with it but Katie has also convinced me to pick it up and try it again but the way she spoke about the kingdoms was just an instant kind of on my wish list. The Kingdoms is a historical novel of alternate history of what would happen or what did happen if the French won the Napoleonic Wars. It's a story of history, of time, of memory, of love lost and found. One thing Katie mentioned in her review was just how playful this book was and how you can really tell that Natasha Pulley is taking pleasure in playing with history and for me that just sounds perfect and I started to read the very beginning page um, and I feel like it's something that I'm going to really enjoy. The last book is a bit of an unexpected choice for me but not just because of the genre because I don't read much fantasy but mainly because it's about witches and I normally have a massive a witch season. I go into witch mode in like the autumn and for a good few months I just read books about witches and often is non-fiction with maybe a little bit of fiction thrown in. I just thought why wait? I'm supporting bookshops, I'm doing this for a good cause. Um, it's what I'm trying to tell myself um, as I keep buying books. The book in question is Fred Needle by Carrie Thomas. I remember so much excitement for this book when I was at HarperCollins because where I sat in the office was literally like behind me was Harper Voyager and I remember seeing beautiful proofs of this and was slightly jealous of everybody else in the office and then saw it travelling across many a bookstagram. I was always just really intrigued by it because the world building just sounded magical and it also slightly reminded me of a YA series that I remember reading when I was a child, like a teenager, called Beautiful Creatures um, but I just am really excited to read this in the autumn, especially because it is set in London so I feel like being able to explore a magical London, I can't think of anything better. The book also has this really beautiful magical map um, and the shout line is magic is the first sin it must be bound and I just think I'm gonna really love it. I have heard mixed things about it but I think if I read this in the right time, the right place, um, I will be spellbound. <laughs> So they are all the books that I bought during this Independent Bookshop week and I will put a playlist to all of my bookshopping videos so you can go on more bookshopping trips with me because they are my favourite videos to film and thank you to Books My Bag for gifting me a voucher so I can really, really enjoy Independent Bookshop week. In fact I've got one more book to show you which is kind of cheating because I didn't buy it during Independent Bookshop week and it isn't really a book. Our wedding album arrived today and I think it looks so fancy. It's like I'm doing a story time. I won't show you because obviously you're bored of the wedding right now. Look at that. So these are all pictures taken by our photographer and I got it made as like a photo book with papier. Look at that though. What a, I mean, you know, 10 out of 10 says The Guardian. A masterpiece says <laughs> The Times Literary Supplement. Anyway, it just came in the post and I wanted to share because... It's actually way bigger than I thought it was going to be. And at the end, I popped in our, like, the readings we had, so the poems. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I thought it was cute. Um, I, don't know if we're, I don't know where we're going to keep it. I feel like we should just keep it as, like, a coffee table book. So, just in case anybody ever forgets we're married, we'll slide it, slide it across. Um, but yes, that is that is the last thing I have to show you. So what I would love if you made it to the end of this video, if you're now sitting with me here, thank you. Um, but what I was thinking was you could leave me your favourite bookshop, leave me a bookshop recommendation and I'll add it to my very long list. And if you don't want to share your recommendation, please just leave a classic stack of books emoji. We'll go for the OG. Um, but thank you again for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video.